In this lecture, we'll be talking about using task continuation. So remember, until our last lecture, we were discussing about how we can make our non-async code to run using task.run method to make it run as an asynchronous code. And we also use a wait method to perform that operation. So all these things were working for us as an asynchronous code and we could able to make that happen. What if we wanted to get the response of any operation whoever completes first? Because all these days we have been seeing that for an synchronous code as well as for the non-synchronous code, we could not see any difference in the responses or the way it writes the response unless until you see the non-blocking operation in the UI or something like that. Because we are not using any UI within our code and we are keeping things much simpler, we couldn't demonstrate how that could be happen. So in order for that to happen, we are going to talk about what is called as the continuation. So we are going to write code something like this. Basically, after the task.run operation completes, we are going to say an task.when any method. So there are many different inbuilt methods available in the task, which can perform so many different operations for us. So some of them are this, as you can see, I'm going to say task.when any method of the response one or response two when any of the response one or response two is complete, then continue with the completed task like this. So you are gonna essentially write the result over here. So you're gonna say completed task dot result. You remember the result property that we wrote in our last lecture, which is gonna print the response for us over here. So that is what you are gonna be basically printing for us. And then you are essentially gonna print the remaining task something like this. So basically, if the completed task, if it is equal to response one, then you should print the response two, if not print the response one. So that is what you're going to be basically doing over here. So this way, you will notice that the continuation task is going to keep printing the value for us until we have got any of the response. And we also need to do continuation task dot wait here, because that is how the task dot run operation we did in our last lecture as well. We need to call the wait method. I know this code is going to be overkill, especially for the playwright automation testing, but please stick with me. These are the methods that are going to make up you to understand how the asynchronous programming really works and how behind the scene in playwright, these things are working as well. So let's quickly see a demo so that you understand what I really mean about this code. So now I'm going to go back to the speaker code once again. And because we have written these two code until our last lecture, I'm going to write another method over here. So I'm just going to copy paste this time without me writing again the same code that I have written already. And you can see that these two line of code is pretty much exactly the same task dot run of the fetch data to call this particular line. And then there is this task dot when any method and it's going to wait for any of the responses. And if any of the response comes in as a completed task, it's going to print the result and it's going to print the remaining value for us over here and the task is going to be completed. And because this continuation task is a task type, we also need to perform a wait operation pretty much like how we did over here in this particular task dot run. Hopefully now we are quite clear with this particular demonstration. And now I'm going to go back to the program.cs file and let me try to run this code just to show the existing functionality. You see that every time while I call the demo sync HTTP client, it is going to print both the value same time, even though they are running asynchronously. And the reason why it couldn't be able to print at least one value is because we have not used the continuation or at least told the code to print any one of the value it is available. So that's the reason why we have written this continue with code. So I'm just going to comment this particular code and I'm going to say think with client dot demo sync HTTP call with task without async. So this is another method. And now if I run this, the magic happens. You will notice that it performs the call and prints the first response, which is very, very faster and then it prints the second value. And the reason why this is really happening is because it could able to perform an asynchronous nature of the code. So that's why you can see that the first response comes in instantly because it was faster. And after five seconds, the second response is coming because that is how the code actually works behind the scene for us. So this is the way we can see that we could able to make an non-async code, which is the web client code, to execute the code in an synchronous fashion using the task.run method. 
And now you may be wondering, hey Karthik, that is fine because now we are going to talk about an asynchronous playwright code. How are we going to use these operation with an asynchronous code that we have written over here? How do we do those operation? Well, that is what we are going to be talking in our next lecture. But at least now you have got the idea of how that you can print any of the response which is available instantly once it is completed. And this has proven the point that we have written an asynchronous HTTP request over here.